What I like about farming is, is growing things. And as a farmer, you don't get many years. Every year is a crop year. And so if you're lucky, <clears throat> you might start when I was lucky because I started farming when I was 16, 17. And if you're lucky, you might get 40, or maybe if you're really lucky, you'll get 50 goes at it. <clears throat> so every year is a challenge to grow a really good crop and to breed good sheep and to improve all the time. And of course you get setbacks, you get, you got a crop looking beautiful and then the drought comes along and you don't get much grain or you get a frost and it's gone. But it's a challenge. You're always striving to do better and to just uh, build an enterprise and make room for my sons to come home. I suppose it's just a passion. You just, just want to build a, a, a good enterprise and you want to do the best all the time. When you own your own land, I think you have a feeling that you own something or you, you belong to something. Um, you, it's part of you and we don't like to see the land blowing away. We don't like to see too much rain where it's flooding. It, it is, it becomes, your land becomes a part of you and it, I suppose I've said it before, but it's, a, it's just a passion you've got. And some people, it's, they have a farm and then they sell it and then they go. Off they go, they retire, move to the city. I, I'm not a city dweller. I just like the open spaces, I like the freedom. You can get up in the morning and you haven't got your neighbour yelling and you don't hear any noise. And you might hear a dog barking in the distance or a sheep bleating or a cow, or you've got the wind. It's just the freedom that you've got and it's your own land. And the more you do and the harder you work, the more successful you become. And it, when I had no money, money seemed to be important. And now we've, we're successful and we've got money, it's nowhere near as important. Improving it and having the best and having it really neat and tidy is more important than anything. Well, <clears throat> the day that we... Uh, the sheep story we start at the beginning because the, the, we were... We, it became a gradual thing. We worked out that the sheep price crashed and we were all wondering, what are we gonna do with our sheep? But so it was an over a period of two or three months, we all came to the realisation that the sheep couldn't be sold and we kept hoping and hoping that somebody would buy the sheep. And it was like a um, cutting your leg off with a, with a blunt saw and because it became inve inevitable that we would have to shoot the sheep. And it was a very sad day. They were yarded and we had a big pit alongside. And you, um, I, I helped my neighbour and my neighbour helped me. So you systematically went through with the rifle, bang, bang, bang. And you were just shooting the sheep. And then we were just dragging them and tipping them over the side of the pit. It was horrible, it was horrendous. And, you know, blood and shooting sheep and... There was no option. You couldn't sell them and you couldn't give them away. So you had no option. And it was a job that had to be done. You did it and you got on with it. And it was terrible, but I don't, you just got on with it. And the next day we put the dirt across the top. And when you drive past, I suppose you say, I remember that, <clears throat> that, that, that patch of dirt was all my, all my beautiful sheep in it. And I suppose we shed a tear. I can't really remember. If I had to talk about um, something that was successful or a day that was enjoyable or something that, uh, that I did in my life that was meaningful <clears throat> would have to be when my shearer, who was sure for me for 20 years, was my friend and he was dying of motor neuron disease. I asked him what would make him happy and he said, if I was taken for a drive and I could see all the old sheds where I shore my sheep in. And so I collected two friends and a vehicle and some beers and we went round and we drove him around in his last days 
to all the sheds he's sure in. And we got to Lamaroo and we said to Mid, his name was Mid Trowbridge, we said to Mid, what do you want for lunch? And he said, I want a Chico roll and chips. And that was something just so simple and he just enjoyed it. And it was just a fantastic day. He was just, he was, he, he lifted from his despair of knowing that his days were numbered and, and he just had a fantastic day and it, it made us all feel good that we were with him and we never mentioned the fact that he was dying. It was just, we were just with him and we were happy to be with him and for him. It was a good day.